Hello, my friends. What do I mean with the words treatment boundaries? I Googled it and got stuff like the boundary between like a professional relationship lines that you don't cross. But the way that, that I mean it for the purpose of this video is there are treatments like there are treatments that are available to you as an option to help or man help manage your condition. And so there are there are treatments that you will consider. There's treatments that maybe you're like, oh, you know, kind of on the fence about, and then there's treatments that you're like, absolutely not. I will not consider that and I will not go there. And the reason I mention this is because I'm actually going through something with the Violev pump, which I'll get to um, in, a, in a minute. But so I have my own story, but then I've got stories from friends. So for example, a friend of mine, uh, Michelle Slow Dancing with Parkinson's made a video about how she feels pressure from her doctor to get DBS. And please comment below um, and add to that conversation because I have felt it as well in the past, but my doctor listened. This is the difference. Um, in the beginning, when I started seeing my MDS again, I had been seeing her, but then my insurance stopped letting me go to Stanford, and then I went to a local neurologist, and now I'm back seeing my MDS again because I've got different insurance. But um, she also made it very clear to me that like I didn't have to do it right now. And so when I, when I got the courage to say, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I just can't consider it right now, and I really would rather not even talk about it, but it's good to know that it's an option if I want to go that direction in the future. And ever since then, I, I know that it's available, so I've asked questions, but that's it. So to hear that somebody in the Parkinson's community is feeling this intense pressure from their, their doctor, their neurologist, to get a procedure that they're not comfortable um, with and that, that like crosses like, their boundary lines, not only do they not feel ready, they feel like it's too early, but this doctor won't provide any other options, apparently, for her to, to try. And it's, <clears throat> it's unfortunate, it's, it's, it fr it's frustrating, it makes me angry. She is looking for a, a different doctor, which is great, but she shouldn't be in the position to begin with. Okay, so there's that. There's the, the, the forced pressure to maybe go, to go beyond where you're comfortable with. But then in terms of identifying what your treatment boundaries are, this is where I think it gets even more complicated because these lines change. So like in the beginning with Parkinson's, you may not be at that point in time where you feel like, okay, I'm, gonna get, I'm ready for DBS. But then someone else might be in the same kind of range, has the same range of symptoms, and they feel like, no, I'm totally ready for DBS. These lines are very personal and no one can decide them except for yourself, but that's where I think too sometimes like when it's a little bit squishy, but, and then not only is it like it, it's a subjective thing, these lines, right, but they change. So in the beginning, like I was saying in the beginning with like early in Parkinson's, you might not feel the need, right? But then five, 10 years down the road, if you know you're still like, I mean, in five, five years, I'll be 54. So I'd still be in an okay range to have the process, but that's if I even wanted it. And people have asked me in the past why, why I don't do, why I haven't done DBS. And my primary reason is that my Parkinson's affects my gait. I don't, I'm not a tremor dominant, I, I don't have tremor dominant Parkinson's. So my doctors confirmed this and I've read the research. I will include a link to it uh, in the, the description. But people who have more gait issues symptoms with Parkinson's don't tend to do as well as people who um, are dealing with tremor dominant Parkinson's. And one of the th things that researchers have found is that around the five year mark that gait issues can be symptoms, gait symptoms can get worse, balance can be made worse. So what I've decided what's best for myself is that until like te there's like a technological advance because gait issues Again, this is, you know, from what I've read and from research and from doctors, gait symptoms with Parkinson's tend to be a lot more difficult to treat than tremor um, issues. And, and so, anyways, that's, that is the, those are the reasons why I um, haven't done DBS and I'm not considering it at all. Now about the pump. And I feel really terrible, like, about this whole thing. And this is, again, I think where, like, 
your treatment boundaries and these lines and staying firm with them, it can be hard for some of us because we respect our doctors. Let's say we have a great relationship with our doctor and, and they recommend something and then you think, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I'll try it. And then maybe you start having doubts, but then you've already started it. And then it's just like, ah, some people, they know those lines and that that's just it. And they're, they're, they have no problem saying with what they want to say, but I'm a Libra. So sometimes, you know, like I'm always like weighing things out. My medications and, and adding to them or changing my routine, I take very seriously. So for example, this is when I wasn't seeing my MDS when I was in that no man's land with my uh, insurance not letting me see her um, and seeing a local neurologist, he wanted to add amantadine. He kept recommending amantadine for me. And it took like a year, a year and a half before I was like, okay, I will try it. I, I tend to move very slowly even if it, even at the cost of maybe sacrificing something, um, I just want to be really comfortable in, in these decisions. And what makes me feel terrible about being in this position with the pump is that I know so many people who would love to be in my position and, and, and have access to it. So I feel so fortunate that, you know, I qualified and that I was able to, um, you know, because of my private insurance, I was able to like get in on this program where it was supposed to be paid for for like two years. I'm not quite sure that got really technical and confusing, but anyway, so I feel really lucky. And then it comes in the mail and I just, I just kind of panicked and I, and I freaked out. The size of the pump, I thought, yes, it's smaller than the Duopa, 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 I think that's how you say it. But um, it's smaller and it's, it's definitely like, I think more user friendly but it still scared me. I mean, it was big, it was bulky. And then I've, I've got friends who are taking, um, the, who are using the pump and they love it. They absolutely love it. There is one woman that I know whose like adjustment period has taken a little bit longer than they've expected, but she seems to be doing really well. So I haven't heard anything bad from anyone about it yet. So all the news and the feedback I've gotten has been really good. But one woman was kind enough to share with me her, a video of her getting herself, her body, cleaning the area, getting it all ready to um, apply the, the, the subcutaneous patch where the little sticker thing is under your skin. But then on her belly, there was a, a bruise from like a mistake that she had made and, and it just made me panic more. And then I started to think like <clears throat> about like my lifestyle and honestly, like are the medications that I'm taking right now like that bad? Because essentially I feel like I'm getting like a, a constant, because as I said before in videos, I'm, I'm, I've been diagnosed since 2013. I started taking carbidopa levodopa in June of 2014. So this is going to be 11 years that I've been on the medication and it still works. And I know that the pump isn't side effect free either, that you still can get dyskinesias. It's just that your on and off time is, is, is more extended. And then another thing for me was, you know, my, my MDS is about two and a half hours away. In all of Sonoma County, there's not a single MDS. There is in San Francisco, but I had a bad experience at UCSF, so I go down to Stanford because they've always been really nice with me, um, even though, you know, UCF, UCSF is a lot closer. I also have to take into consideration the length of time because once you move over to the pump, during that, like, initial period of time, like, they want you to come back I believe it's like once a week for like the next following two to three weeks, perhaps, to make sure that you're adjusting, that things are going as they should be. And it's great, all the support that, uh, that you are given, but I, that was another thing. I was like, I just, I don't want to make this big investment. And especially, especially because this is the final place that I'll end on, it's, um, I don't know about my insurance. My, my husband's a federal employee and I get my insurance through him. And so... Yeah, I didn't want to go through all of that and then then on top of it just not have insurance anymore. So there was a bunch of, of thinking going into this decision, but what I, f I feel terrible about is I've got the pump here, I've got the medicine here, I'm sure they won't take it back even though it's been stored properly. I mean, I don't know. I haven't used the pump or anything like that, but yeah, I mean, and I'm sorry to, for those who are like waiting for it, but and this is where, you know, when I have this discussion with my, with my doctor, I'm just gonna have to say like, I'm super sorry. Cause I think she was really excited for me to try it. And I was initially, but I just, 
I had a serious change of heart and I just, I know that I'm not ready for it at this moment in time. So now that line is drawn and we'll see. Um, you know, these lines, like I've said, they're squishy, they change because our status, our health can change and our needs change. And that's what flexibility ultimately means and what we need when we say that we need our doctors to be flexible. I think hopefully like that they can understand these types of predicaments, you know, it's like personal, it's got to do with insurance, it's got to do with, you know, like there's a vanity thing, there's a fear thing. I mean, it's a big, it's a big change to go from, you know, taking the pills that I'm taking to using a subcutaneous device 24 hours a day. Yeah, so I know that's a lot, but yeah, comment below. Let me know what like your experiences are, your, your fears, your thoughts. Um, if you've been pressured by your doctor, those, those kinds of things. Do you have your own boundaries? And then are they hard to adhere to because people are like, oh, just try it and stop, uh, stop it if it doesn't work and um, those kinds of things. Because like the other thing I'm realizing, I think in the beginning, it was like, oh, just try a new medication or you can tweak this and tweak that. It made it sound like you're just kind of dialing, changing like the dials a little bit. Like you're doing some fine tuning on like a really nice like stereo system, which is you know our human body. Um, but like it's actually... It's 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 a, like it's going from pills to like a, a liquid solution subcutaneous infusion is it's a it's a big change and so I don't know I mean obviously you can always go back but like there's this part of me that's always just like ah oh, I'm scared you know what like, how will I be changed by that experience and speaking of too I'm just I'm so excited about the stem cell research I'm gonna put an NPR listen to this interview. Just, I heard this the other day, like, I, I could almost cry, like, I mean, it's like, for the first time, given me hope for something that's very real that could help regenerate the lost nerve cells, not reverse Parkinson's, but, you know, at least perhaps slow it and regenerate some new neurons that have been lost. I don't know. Um, check it out. As always, let me know what you think, and thank you.